Chapter 641, Spirit Reinforcement, 3. Jun Wuxi gave up on the idea after hearing Fan Zhao out. If these runes are similar to those on Hu Yao's spirit ring, then it could very possibly bring about much greater effects to their spirit rings. Unfortunately, they knew almost nothing about the meanings behind those characters, and there was no way they were able to put them to good use. It was highly possible that they contained great power, were they then supposed to just watch that invaluable opportunity slip by right before their eyes? June Wuxi's eyes narrowed in thought and she suddenly turned to look at Fan Zhao. Teach me how to forge rings. Fan Zhao was shocked and taken aback by the sudden request. You want to give it a try? June Wuxi nodded. Fan Zhao sighed and said, If I'm really interested, after we come back from the Heaven's End Cliff, I'll teach it to you then. All right? Sure. After coming to an agreement with Fan Zhao, Jun Wuxi did not say anything more on it, but just sat on one side, staring at the characters she had scribbled on the piece of paper, scrutinizing every single one. Fan Zhao, on the other hand, continued to forge spirit rings for the others. Daylight faded and the darkness of night fell across the land. Giao Chu and Mu Qian Fan returned fully loaded with bags and bags of equipments and many other things. After they stored everything away properly, Kiao Chu could not wait a moment longer as he rushed to see Fan Zhao, crowding round to watch Fan Zhao forge the spirit rings. The process of the forging of spirit rings was long and arduous. Just a single day was not enough for him to forge everyone's spirit rings. Jun Wuxi watched and observed what the entire process of forging a spirit ring entailed, whatever else she wanted to understand would require her to slowly ponder and contemplate before she could gain a better understanding of it. Back in her room, Jun Wuxi sat at the table in the middle. The little black cat lay on the table looking at its mistress' seemingly thoughtful expression. Lord Mema had just been well fed and it was lying on the bed with all four of its hooves splayed flat out, fast asleep. Were it an entire verse on a page, or short sentences jumbled up together? Jun Wuxi said it out aloud as she was pondering. She had just stumbled upon a way to use spirit reinforcement but was still unable to bring it a step further, and it greatly frustrated her. She thoughtlessly dipped her finger into her cup of tea, and traced out on the table with her wet finger, the symbols currently swimming endlessly in her mind. The little black cat lying quietly at the side swished its tail lazily in the air. It was already late into the night, and June Wuxi did not look the least bit sleepy, but it was already feeling weariness creep in. It stretched its body and stood up, taking two steps forward, wanting to leap off the table. However, a sudden surge of a blazing hot sensation, shot up from under its paw. The next moment, a ball of fire completely engulfed the entire little black cat. Meow. What the hell? The sudden roaring and raging inferno shocked the little black cat into a shriek as all its fur stood up on their ends. It quickly leapt off the table but the ball of fire was still around its entire body. Under a series of meows and screeches, the little black cat darted and leapt all over the room, attempting everything it could to extinguish the fire on its body. Jun Wuxi's eyes were wide with shock as she stared, seeing the ball of flames engulf the little black cat. A few seconds later, the ball of flames suddenly disappeared. The little black cat was bathed in a layer of cold sweat, its claws dug deeply into the drapes at the window. Its sharp claws had torn up the curtains with two long stretches across it. Meow, what was that just now? It almost shocked me out of death. The little black cat jumped off from the drapes and snuggled deep into June Wuxi's arms, still trembling heavily, seemingly not fully recovered from the sudden shock. Are you alright? June Wuxi looked down at the little black cat in her arms. The phenomenon that had occurred on the little black cat earlier intrigued her endlessly. I don't know suddenly I just caught fire the little black cat wailed pitifully. It had just wanted to go sleep, what went wrong? June Wuxi lifted the little black cat, and turned it all around to inspect it all over. She saw that the little black cat was completely unscathed, and its fur was still just as luxuriously smooth. Chapter 642, Spirit Reinforcement, 4
Painful? June Wuxi asked, plainly serious as she held the little black cat up. The little black cat raised a paw to wipe away the tears at the corners of its eyes and paused a moment before it slowly shook its head. Strangely, I did not feel any pain. But it was a rather rude shock. Who wouldn't run around as if they had gone mad when they suddenly find themselves suddenly engulfed in flames? June Wuxi narrowed her eyes and thought about what she had just noticed. She had seen the flames on the little black cat clearly earlier. Although the little black cat was a spirit body, after it coalesced and took its current form, it would still feel pain when hurt by external forces. The flames just now had completely engulfed it and had seemed like it was going to burn the little black cat into crisp, but the little black cat had not felt the slightest ounce of pain nor was it hurt in any way from it. June Wuxi's eyes traced back the path the little black cat had taken. The black burnt marks from the roaring flames were still clearly visible on the floor, and even a corner of the drapes had been completely burnt off. All these told her that the flames had been real and was not an illusion. But why did not little black cat not feel the heat in the slightest? June Wuxi was still a little puzzled, but when her eyes swept over the area of the table where the cat had been before it jumped off, her eyes suddenly lit up. Before you caught fire earlier, did you step on anything? June Wuxi asked the little black cat in a serious tone. The little black cat shook its head. June Wuxi pointed at the scribbles of the runes she had made with her fingers dipped in her tea, still wet on the table and asked, stepped on these? The little black cat paused a moment, and subconsciously raised a front paw, turning it around to peer at it closely with its eyes. Maybe I might have stepped on that, it seemed to vaguely remember before the flames had suddenly engulfed it, it had felt a slightly wet sensation under its paw. June Wuxi's eyes sparkled, and before the little black cat could react, she was already carrying the little black cat to go to the table. Eyeing the still wet runes on the table, she pressed one of the little black cat's hind paw onto it. All of a sudden, a strong wind kicked up. The little black cat in June Wuxi's hand suddenly found itself caught within an invisible wind, torn right out from June Wuxi's grasp. Me ooh ooh ooh. Caught up in an invisible wind and thrown up in the air, the little black cat tail bristled fully. It could feel four separate forces swirling around its four limbs. The unfamiliar forces made the little black cat feel like it was riding upon the winds and it was finding it extremely difficult to get used to stepping on nothing but insubstantial air. The little black cat was suspended in midair and it was turning and rolling in all directions as its long furry tail drew circles in the air. Suddenly, the strange forces disappeared, and caught completely unawares, the little black cat fell from its elevated position with a screech. Fortunately June Wuxi was fully prepared for it and she reached out her arms to catch the poor feline in her arms. The consecutive bouts of traumatic experiences left the poor little black cat giddy and confused. Its mind was still spinning as it lay in June Wuxi's arms. So this is one way it can be used. June Wuxi's misgivings in her eyes cleared at that moment as an almost unnoticeable smile spread across her lips. What do you say? The little black cat shook its head to clear its confused mind, its tongue all tangled up. June Wuxi put the cat down carefully on the table and turned around to walk over to the bed to pick up the happily sound asleep Lord Mem into her arms. She then dipped a finger into the tea once again and quickly scribbled a series of runes on the table. She held out one of Lord Mem paws in her hand and pressed it down upon the wet runes she had just written. Me the sleepy Lord Mem bleated and wiggled its short stubby tail, oblivious to what was really going on, before falling back into sleep. It looks like these runes only work on spirit bodies. June Wuxi laid Lord Mema back onto the bed, and walked back to the table to sit down in contemplation, as she saw Lord Mema continue to snore away. Chapter 643, Spirit Reinforcement, 5. The little black cat on the table finally managed to clear its mind after much effort but what it immediately saw, was its own mistress looking at it with a strange look in her eyes. Those eyes, immediately heightened the little black cat's innate animal instincts and it warned the cat of the very close and imminent danger. What are you thinking of? The little black cat shrank back, 
and backed itself into the farthest corner, a look of terror filled its horrified eyes as it stared at June Wuxi. June Wuxi stretched out her hand, and she grabbed one of the little black cat's front paws, forcibly dragging the petrified cat before her. I went through thick and thin with you for so many years. I deserve at least even that little bit of credit even if you don't appreciate it. You can't do this. The little black cat was still babbling incessantly when it suddenly found its mouth covered by June Wuxi's hand. You are getting more and more talkative. June Wuxi said, her eyes narrowed as she looked into the little black cat's eyes. Before being reborn, little black had been a lot more quiet. The little black cat looked mournfully at June Wuxi. It wanted to tell its mistress so badly. It wasn't true that it did not like to talk in the past, it was just that June Wuxi's past life could not be described as anything else but dull and monotonous. Living those days in endless repetition, carrying out the exact same tasks every single day, what was there for him to talk about? What you stepped on, were runes that I wrote. They are the same runes fans are oh employed on the spirit ring, but I cannot be sure of what they mean. But seeing what happened to you earlier, these runes can be put to good use. When applied onto a spirit body, it will create and lend to it certain effects. As she spoke, June Wuxi released the little black cat's mouth and dipped a finger into her tea, quickly drawing out a strange character on the table. This is what you stepped on the first time. As she finished her statement, she continued writing a second character on the table. This is what you stepped on the second time. The first time, you were engulfed in flames but did not feel any pain. That means that the power possessed your being, but would not cause any harm to yourself. I tested it on Lord Mem earlier, applying the exact same method did not work. Only spirit bodies are able to make use of the powers these runes give. June Wuxi rubbed at her chin as her mind raced, quickly processing all her observations. But on both occasions, the time that the powers lasted were very short. It could be due to the fact that the runes were written out with my finger dipped in tea, and the tea had evaporated quickly from your body and that's why the powers did not last long. If what she was guessing was to be correct, then they wouldn't even need to directly apply the runes on the spirit ring but to find a suitable method to temporarily apply the runes on the ring spirits. She would then be able to gain her results faster and it would not harm the ring spirits even if she applied the runes incorrectly. What made June Wooks even happier from this discovery was that it would solve another big problem on her mind. She would finally be able to recognize the different characters among the runes. She could remember the individual shapes of the various characters from the runes but she had not been able to decipher the meanings behind them. Now, she would only need to write them out with water, apply it onto the little black cat, and the resulting effects would tell her the meaning behind the character applied. The process was quick, and it did not call for much energy to carry it out. You you don't really mean to test them all on me right? The little black cat's whiskers trembled, as it stared at June Wuxi. June Wuxi just nodded honestly. The little black cat shook its head vehemently as it pleaded. You can't. You cannot do this. Don't you still have little Lotus? Summon him now. Why is it always me? It must protest. June Wuxi patted the little black cat on its head and said gently, You just reminded me, Chapter 644, Spirit Reinforcement, 6. The little black cat's mouth gaped open in surprise. It seemed like felt like did it just sell Little Lotus out? Without another word, June Wuxi immediately summoned Little Lotus. Little Lotus stood barefooted on the ground, his tiny face looking innocently at June Wuxi. His eyes suddenly spotted the soundly asleep Lord Mem on the bed and his pudgy body immediately shivered. Mistress is there anything you need? Little Lotus asked obediently, discreetly shifting his tiny feet to put as much distance as he could, between himself and the bed. Little Lotus was still haunted by the horrifying memory of being chased and bitten by Lord Memo the last time. That time, if his mistress had not dragged Lord Memo off, he might very well have been reduced to become a tiny flower but now. I have a task, to hand over to you and Little Black. June Wuxi said to Little Lotus. Little Lotus nodded his head, 
agreeing readily, his chubby face breaking out into a brilliant smile. I will do my utmost for any task my mistress assigns to me. The little black cat could not make itself look straight into little Lotus eyes and it raised its paw to cover its face, hiding the guilt it felt in its heart. In moments, little Lotus would not be able to continue smiling so brightly anymore, the little black cat was still a little too naive. Although June Wuxi had summoned little Lotus, but that did not mean it had escaped the calamity. June Wuxi held a cup of water in her band and wrote a whole series of spirit reinforcement runes on the ground before making the little black cat and little lotus test out their effects concurrently. The two tiny miserable figures were so badly traumatized that they felt death might be easier for them. Soon, little lotus was in tears, but he had no choice but to continue testing out the various effects the spirit reinforcement runes gave while tears flowed down his cheeks and his nose ran continuously. As she wrote out more and more spirit reinforcement runes, June Wuxi suddenly felt her spiritual power gradually decreasing. After writing about twenty more characters, she found her spiritual powers completely depleted. She panted slightly as she fell back onto the chair. She turned to look at the completely exhausted bear, the little black cat and little lotus, so tired that they could no longer stand up, and her brows creased up deeply. In the beginning, she had not felt her spiritual powers deplete. But when the number of runes she wrote increased, she had suddenly felt her spiritual powers draining very quickly. But that phenomenon had not manifested when she had written those runes on paper. Composing spirit reinforcement runes drains a person's spiritual power after all. June Wuxi contemplated rubbing at her chin. She had written a full page of the spirit reinforcement runes on a piece of paper and tried it on both the little black cat and little lotus earlier but there had been no effect at all. It was rather obvious the spirit reinforcement runes would drain at one's spiritual energy only when the runes could be applied onto a spirit body. If the runes could not be applied, it did not deplete any spiritual energy. When she had used water to write those runes, as those runes could be transferred onto the bodies of the little black cat and little lotus, it had eaten at her spiritual energies. When she came to that conclusion, many things became clear to June Wuxi. Little wonder when Fan Zuo was forging the spirit rings, he needed to maintain an incessant and constant supply of spiritual energy. It would seem that spirit reinforcements whose effects lasted a longer period of time would require a much greater amount of spiritual energy. June Wuxi took out the heaven's flask that contained the water of heaven's spring. Under the highly nourishing water of heaven's spring, the snow lotus was overflowing with spiritual energy. As June Wuxi absorbed it into her body, the process greatly surprised her this time. The speed that she absorbed the spiritual energies this time, had doubled from her usual speed. The spiritual energy in her body was almost fully depleted and even under those circumstances, the gains made on her growth in spiritual energy levels was at a speed she had never experienced before. June Wuxi's eyes were thoughtful. I had not thought that quickening the draining of my spiritual power would bring about such an unexpected result. Chapter 645 spirit reinforcement, 7. Realizing the condition her body was in, June Wuxi was in no hurry to continue testing out the various effects of the spirit reinforcement runes further but she went on to record in detail the different effects of the over twenty runes the little black cat and little lotus had tested out earlier. Besides fire and wind, most of the other spirit reinforcement runes strengthened or reinforced other abilities. An example was what Fan Zuo had mentioned. He knew of three types of spirit reinforcement runes which increased speed, strength, or durability. June Wuxi had identified two sets of runes out of those three and discovered another two that made the spirit body extremely light and lithe or enabled them to mask their presence. Different spirit reinforcement runes would give completely different effects. If the runes' effects are well matched and properly applied, the result would most definitely be astounding. Exhausted and sprawled flat upon the table, June Wuxi completely relaxed her body to absorb more of the spiritual energy from the snow lotus. Although she discovered how the spirit reinforcement could be used, 
and had understood some of the effects the spirit reinforcement runes gave, it was still a challenge to her if she intended to employ them in battle. The key thing was how she should attach the spirit reinforcement runes onto the bodies of the spirit bodies better, as its minute long effects would not be of much use in a battle. As June Wuxi contemplated on her thoughts sprawled on the table, she slowly drifted off into sleep. The little black cat was already so worn out and weary but it still valiantly pushed itself to its feet. It jumped up on the bed and bit on the blanket, dragging it to come next to June Wuxi, struggling clumsily as it tried to cover the blanket over her. After a series of exhausting attempts, the little black cat finally fell limp, flat upon the table. It shifted its body slightly, leaning against June Wuxi's hand and closed its eyes in blissful rest. Early the next morning, Kiaochu knocked on June Wuxi's room door. June Wuxi was awoken from her sleep and she picked up the still sleeping little black cat before going to open the door. Little Zuo told me to come ask you whether you want to watch him for Jar Spirit Rings. Kiaochu asked, full of vigor as he looked at June Wuxi. Fan Zuo had helped Hu Yao and Fi Yan forge their spirit rings yesterday and it was his and Rong Ruo's turn today. Jun Wuxi had not intended to go over, but after considering it a moment, she nodded her head. Jun Wuxi had a unique method of cultivating her spiritual powers and that enabled her to replenish and recover her powers quickly. However, that wasn't the case for Fan Zuo. He had forged two Yao's and Fi Yan's spirit rings consecutively and Jun Wuxi was guessing that his spirit powers must have been quite badly drained. Based on her judgment, Fan Zuo shouldn't be able to continue with the forging of the rings today. Jun Wuxi walked over to Fan Zuo's room with the little black cat in her arms. When she saw Fan Zuo, his condition did not look as bad as she had thought and his spiritual powers did not seem to be that badly drained as well. Jun Wuxi was puzzled and she made her doubts known by asking out aloud. Fan Zuo was surprised, but he immediately smiled at her. Don't forget that I am from the Middle Realm after all. People in the Middle Realm are able to use a special method to raise their spirit powers. If I had used my spirit powers without that method, I would have collapsed after forging just one spirit ring. A special method to raise your spirit powers? June Wuxi asked, her eyebrow arched. She had been very curious about Giaochu's and the other's ability to force their their spirit powers to reach the purple level after she had witnessed it the last time. Yes, it is something the people from the middle realm are born with. Giaochu was nodding his head in agreement on the side. If you are interested to know more, I will tell it to you in more detail another day. Fan Zuo promised with a wide smile. Fi Yan and Hu Yao had left early that morning. They wanted to find an uninhabited location to test out their reforged spirit rings and see how strong their ring spirits had become. No rush. June Wuxi agreed easily. With her doubts cleared, she saw no point in remaining there and went right out of the inn. She wanted to look for materials that would allow her to apply the spirit reinforcement runes on spirit bodies for a longer period of time. Chapter 646, To Heaven's End Cliff, 1 three days flew by quickly. June Wuxi and all the others had prepared everything and they officially took the first step into their journey to the Heaven's End Cliff. With the addition of Mukian Fan, there was a total of seven of them on the trip. June Wuxi purchased a large-sized horse carriage and they all squeezed into it. She had intended to hire a coachman but Mukian Fan rejected the idea. The exact location of the Heaven's End Cliff was not known to many people in the world and the less people who knew of its location, the better it was for them. He did it in order to prevent the location from being leaked, and also to not invite unnecessary trouble. The task as the coachman, was taken up by Mukian Fan alone, and he politely refused when Giaochu and the others offered to take over for intermittent periods. In Mukian Fan's mind, Having met Jun Wuxi had already changed his life completely and he would put in his whole heart in his endeavors for her. The Heaven's End Cliff from Chanlin Town would take about two weeks at least and they traveled tirelessly during the day, setting up camp to rest at night. They joked and laughed throughout the journey, making the long trip much more enjoyable. Besides Jun Wuxi, 
Fan Zuo and the other's spirit rings had been reforged. When Fan Zuo had attempted to forge Jun Wuxi's spirit ring as the last one in turn, he had found that the black silver completely could not meld or take shape with her spirit ring and that phenomenon had greatly baffled Fan Zuo, resulting in Jun Wuxi being the lone one among the companions with her spirit ring still in its original state. To be fair, Fan Zuo was not to blame as the spirit ring that the snow lotus morphed into was invisible and even Jun Wuxi could not see how it really looked like. She was not even able to ascertain its shape leaving Fan Zuo feeling helpless with the spirit ring's reforging. Day by day, time passed. Throughout the journey, Jun Wuxi experimented with all kinds of materials trying to lengthen the period the spirit reinforcement would take hold but the results were still not too encouraging. When Jun Wuxi brought up the matter to Fan Zuo, Fan Zuo was shocked for a rather long while. When he tried to implement the few spirit reinforcement runes that Jun Wuxi gave him on Giao Chu's, Rong Muo's and his own spirit rings, they had resulted in failure. That had puzzled Jun Wuxi quite a bit. She had tried by using water to write the runes and applied them on Roli and the effects had manifested. But when Fan Zuo had implemented the same set of runes when he forged their rings, there had been no effect at all. Little Xi had discovered something so amazing but it can't be put to good use. It's really such a shame. Sitting within the moving horse carriage, Kiao was holding his hand over his chest, mourning the loss he felt. When he saw Oli's imposing and grandiose form, looking incredibly ferocious, covered fully in roaring flames from the spirit reinforcement, he had almost been delirious with joy. However it had been short-lived. The fact that it would not work when imprinted on the spirit ring disappointed him so badly he was about to cry. No worries. When little Xi learns how to forge spirit rings, she should be able to reforge all of your spirit rings as well. Fan Zuo comforted Giao Chu with a laugh before he turned to look at one side of the carriage, and saw Jun Wuxi holding Cinnabar and Ink within her hands. I believe, spirit reinforcement and its runes, must be fully grasped by a person before it can be used or properly applied. I might have been able to fully duplicate the characters of the runes that you provided me with, but I am unable to confer the right kind of power behind it to make it work. Your intention to learn how to forge spirit rings is completely correct, or it would really be a big loss if this is not pursued fully. Having seen for himself what kind of power and possibilities that spirit reinforcement held, Fan Zuo was anxious to impart to Jun Wuxi his skills as a ring forger. He strongly believed that after Jun Wuxi learned everything he knew, she would definitely be able to create and forge spirit rings that would astound everyone. Jun Wuxi nodded. What Fan Zuo said was exactly what she had in mind. She had already picked up some basics of forging spirit rings from Fan Zuo but she did not possess any soul of flames to experiment with. A ring forger's soul of flames was one with the ring forger. Unless inherited from someone from the same bloodline, or it would be useless even if the soul of flames was put right into the hands of others. Chapter 647, To Heaven's End Cliff, 2 even Fan Zuo did not know where his own soul of flames had originated from. He had inherited it from his mother who passed it down to him. Fan Zuo was able to use it only because of their link in their blood ties. Throughout history, it had remained a great mystery how ring forgers got their soul of flames as not a single ring forger had disclosed that fact to anybody. Even Fan Zuo's mother had never mentioned it to Fan Zuo before. That had caused Jun Wuxi to be unable to act on her desire stopping her from becoming a ring forger. Dusk fell. The horse carriage was within the mountain roads. They had completed about half the journey and it was estimated that they would reach the heavens end cliff in another five days. By now, Jun Wuxi and her companions were far from civilization and there was nobody around them for a hundred miles. They couldn't see a single town all around from their high vantage point and they haven't even sighted a single person for miles. Mukian Fan stopped the carriage at the side of the mountain road and Jun Wuxi and the others stepped out from the carriage one after another. They lit a fire under an overhanging crop of rock and pitched their tents, getting ready to rest. 
although they had remained in the horse carriage all this while, but the Ada's journey in the past ten days had greatly jarred their bones with the bouncy ride over much uneven terrain. Mukian Fan was recovering well from his injuries and more than half of the bandages that covered his body had already been removed. Although the new flesh that had grown over the wounds were badly scarred, but they were much less garish looking than before. His face was however still covered in bandages as there were times he needed to speak and it inadvertently tore at the skin, causing it to take a longer time to heal. I'll go find some firewood. Mukian Fan saw that night was approaching and he stood up and walked towards the trees. Mukian Fan is really such a great help. Throughout this journey, with the way he had been taking on all the tasks single-handedly, I almost feel like an invalid person. Giao Chu said as he massaged his sore knees. In the first few days of the journey, he had wanted to help Mukian Fan with some of the chores but he had been flatly rejected and asked to go back to join the others. Mukian Fan always fought to take on all the menial tasks and never allowed them to lift a finger. I'll go check the vicinity to see if I can find a water source. Rong Muo stood up, and the spirit ring on her finger glowed. Hell butterflies fluttered and danced in the air around Rong Muo, as they emerged from the ring's glow. I'll go with you. Fi Yan said, standing up after. The duo followed the hell butterflies lead and walked towards where they might find a water source. Lord Memmi stayed near June Wuxi's feet, having chewed up all the grass into a bare patch. It was still unsatisfied and it was nudging June Wuxi's legs with its little woolly head. Meh. Lord Mem is still hungry. The little black cat translated Lord Meme's words for June Wuxi and June Wuxi raised her hand to pat Lord Mem on the head. Lord Meme shouldn't be blamed for its voracious appetite. In the day, they all remained within the horse carriage as the wheels rattled along. Sitting in the carriage, the humans were still able to nibble on the dried rations, but Lord Mem only ate fresh greens. Although its body looked tiny at the moment, Lord Meme's real body was extremely huge and several square meters of grass would not be adequate for one meal. If they allowed Lord Meme to have its fill every meal time, their journey would take a whole lot longer. I'll go take a look around. June Wuxi stood up. If it continued on like this, Lord Meme would very soon protest. Giao Chu looked up at June Wuxi with a laugh and nonchalantly reminded her to watch out for dangers before his hands quickly dived into the packs searching for dried meat, for him to roast them slowly over the fire. In terms of powers, although June Wuxi was not like them who could raise their levels to purple, but with the little black cat and Lord Meme, her two ferocious protectors with her, June Wuxi could very well be the one who possessed the most dominating might among all of them. June Wuxi walked towards the trees at the side with the little black cat in her arms as Lord Meme followed happily, its hooves tapping on the ground, and its woolly tail bobbing behind, Chapter 648, To Heaven's End Cliff, 3. Under the thick canopy of leaves, silvery moonlight shone through, creating droplets of glowing light upon the grass, looking like a reflection of the starry sky. June Wuxi stood among the light quietly, allowing Lord Meme to circle around her feet, relentlessly persecuting the innocent plant life around the area. Suddenly, June Wuxi detected a slight scent of blood in the air, and she frowned at the sudden offensive smell. Under the darkness of night, the wind was tinged with a slight chill among the trees as it softly brushed June Wuxi's face, bringing with it the slight bloody scent. It's human blood. The little black cat exclaimed, its nose sniffing the air. June Wuxi stared in the direction that the smell was coming from. The mountain was completely deserted and not a spirit beast had been spotted. Even the most common beasts had not been sighted and when the scent of blood had so suddenly appeared here, it would invariably make June Wuxi find it rather strange. Shall I go see? The little black cat stretched, looking at June Wuxi. June Wuxi nodded. The little black cat darted away and quickly disappeared. At the little black cat's departure, Lord Mema who was still circling June Wuxi's feet only looked up once lazily, staring in the direction the little black cat had disappeared into a moment, before it lowered its head once more, and continued to graze on the grass. It was quiet all around, only the swishing of the leaves in the wind could be heard. 
Suddenly, Jun Wuxi's heart winced. That feeling gave rise to a strong feeling of unease in her heart. That was a signal transmitted from the little black cat. Jun Wuxi immediately picked Lord Mem off the ground and ran quickly towards the direction the little black cat had disappeared into. Among the dimly lit forest, a massive dark shadow was moving fast, weaving between the trees. Several arrows whizzed past the darting shadow, their sharp points driven deep into the tree trunks. A massive black beast, agile like a panther, used the complicated terrain to its advantage, trying to shake off the pursuer's attacks, coming from not far behind it. Mukian Fan was covered in blood as it lay upon the back of the massive black beast. His blood-covered fists gripped tightly onto the skin around the black beast's neck as he vomited out mouthfuls of blood, staining the black beast's jet black fur, a dark scarlet shade. On his back, it was a just dark blotch of red. The clothes on his back were torn and several garish wounds were clearly visible, the cut-up flesh, looking alarmingly gory. As the black beast sprinted and leapt, it left behind a trail of blood behind, on the grass, I won't make it you just escape on your own. With me dragging you down, they will catch up very soon. Mukian Fan said weakly, the exertion making him cough out another mouthful of blood. Grrr. The black beast growled, as if refuting Mukian Fan's suggestion. Mukian Fan gritted his teeth and released his grip. But, just as he was about to slip off the black beast's back, the black beast's tail curled tightly and held Mukian Fan against its back. My mistress saved you, not to let you die in a place like this. Even if you don't want to live on, you still must. The highly anxious black beast spoke in human tongue and Mukian Fan's eyes widened in shock, but he was too weak to say anything else. He had been attacked earlier and just at the moment that he thought he was to die. He had suddenly spotted the little black cat that always accompanied June Wuxi. Before he could even react in the slightest, the little black cat had suddenly transformed, turning into the massive black beast he was slumped across at the moment. The black beast had pulled him out of his predicament and they had fled, but they had not been able to throw off the pursuit. Seeing that the pursuers behind were about to catch up, Mukian Fan was feeling highly anxious, but he was at a loss on what to do. Carrying Mukian Fan on its back, the black beast continued to sprint. But Mukian Fan was not like Jun Wuxi. He was a full grown man and was heavy built. His hefty weight had greatly affected the black beast's speed. Chapter 649 Nobody Messes with My Patient. 1. Suddenly, they were surrounded by several beast spirits, cutting off their route forward. Roar. The black beast gave out a threatening roar. The other beast spirit slept towards the black beast. The black beast suddenly found himself battling with several other beast spirits. Go on. Run. Why are you not running anymore? The pursuers caught up quickly, numbering about ten of them. They were all well built men and when they saw the black beast caught in a tangle with their ring spirits, their faces broke in gleeful smiles. The man's ring spirit had already been defeated by us. This black beast here is not his ring spirit. We don't know where it had sprouted out from, it seems that he has other companions around. Dispose of him quickly, to rid ourselves of more trouble. The leader of the band of men ordered with a frown, watching as their beast's spirits battled with the ferocious black beast. The huge black beast was heavily surrounded. It could have easily escaped with its superior speed but it had been bogged down with a severely injured Mukian fan upon its back, who greatly reduced its agility and ease of movements. Besides having to stop the attacks of the other beast spirits, it still had to ensure Mukian fan did not come under attack. The other beast spirits were not targeting the black beast. After they managed to seal off the black beast's escape, two lion-type beast spirits launched an incessant attack on the black beast from the front, while the other beast spirits circled around to the sides and back of the black beast, leaping towards Mukian Fan upon the its back. Roar! Ignoring the attack coming from the front, the black beast suddenly stood up on its hind legs and swung its paw in a powerful swipe, smashing it onto the head of one of the other beast's spirits. A loud smack resounded through the air. 
that beast spirit was sent flying through the air and smashed onto the trunk of a tree. The overwhelming force bent the tree trunk and with a shudder, the trunk snapped. At the same moment the black beast had sent the beast spirit flying out of the melee, the black beast had left itself open to attack from the other beast spirits. In that briefest of moments, the black beast found that a sizable chunk of flesh had been torn from its underbelly by a smaller beast spirit that had slipped in under the chaos. Even for a spirit body, having suffered from such an attack, would find itself in great agony. The black beast dived into a roll to get out from the enemy's encirclement and it stood up panting heavily, its body twitching from the pain it felt from its underbelly. If not for Mukiane fan on its back, it would have swallowed all these pesky miscreants whole one by one. Several cold gleaming flashes came streaking towards it and the black beast leapt away quickly as three arrows thudded loudly into the ground at the spot where the black beast had just been standing. An archer had his bow strung and he had the arrow fully pulled back, aimed right at the black massive beast, a cruel smile on his lips. Poor beast, I had wanted to toy with you a little more but a pity our boss has given the word that the man upon your back must die. The archer sneered cruelly. The black beast wished for nothing more than to tear the archer into shreds but the other beast spirits had once again surrounded it and was attacking from all directions. The black beast was slowly succumbing under the endless onslaught as more and more wounds appeared on its exhausted body, and it was unable to find a way out of its dire predicament. Leave me behind Mukian Fan pleaded with the black beast, as his heart trenched in pain. He knew he would not live through this and if this continued on, the black beast would be dragged down together with him. His benefactor had saved his life and he could not cause his benefactor's ring spirit to sustain such heavy injuries. The black beast knocked away another beast spirit that charged at it, not showing the slightest sign of releasing Mukian Fan. Justin the band of men saw that the black beast was slowly sinking into their death trap, a sudden sky splitting raw tore through the earth. All the leaves in the trees around them rustled loudly as the deafening roar reverberated around them. The beast spirits that had the black beast helplessly surrounded suddenly froze upon hearing the terrifying roar, and they found themselves trembling helplessly. Their tails drooped and curled up tightly against their bodies, their eyes suddenly filled with endless terror. Chapter 650 Nobody Messes With My Patient, Too. The black beast was in great pain, but upon hearing the ear splitting beastial roar, its eyes lit up. It raised its head and looked in the direction the roar had come from. The ten men standing on the sides had still not recovered from their shock when their eyes suddenly saw a gargantuan black silhouette appear under the cold moonlight charging recklessly right at them. They saw that swaths of trees were being crushed like toothpicks under the black silhouette's unwavering slime charge. The ground below their feet trembled. The cruel beast spirit's tails curled up tightly their ears flattened against their heads, and they quickly turned in retreat. Under the illuminance of the cold moon, the black silhouette's real looks were finally revealed before their eyes. An immense and gigantic spirit beast towered over them before their eyes. Those supposedly huge beast spirits suddenly became minuscule and insignificant before the immense form of the spirit beast before them. What what in the world is that the leader of the band of men stared wide-eyed with his tongue twisted as he stared incredulously at the unimaginably enormous spirit beast, its pure white body was further illuminated in a glow by the moonlight shining down upon it, as its magnificent nine white tails waved mesmerizingly behind, but it was in turn the most horrendous sight, an unbelievable monstrosity that had just climbed out from the deep abyss to the enemies. They had never seen a spirit beast so gigantic. It's a guardian grade spirit beast. That is a true blue guardian grade spirit beast. A scream sounded from among the men. None of them had expected that in such a far away and deserted cluster of woods, would they come to encounter a guardian grade spirit beast only heard of in legends. The group of men who had been ferociously aggressive suddenly found their legs go weak, their earlier bravado quickly seeping into the cold hard ground beneath their feet in the face of the guardian grade spirit beast. They were frozen in their spot, unable to move an inch, praying fervently that the guardian grade spirit beast that towered over all of them would not notice their tiny and insignificant forms. There there is someone on top of the monster. 
a sharp-eyed man exclaimed loudly, suddenly raising up his hand, pointing at the head of the incredible massive spirit beast. On top of the gigantic spirit beast, a tiny figure stood facing into the wind under the illuminating moonlight, staring at them with a pair of eyes that suddenly chilled them to their bones. What shocked them further was when they discovered the figure standing on top of the guardian grade spirit beast was a human youth. How was that possible? Spirit beasts could never be tamed, moreover, this is a legendary guardian grade spirit beast which possessed near human intelligence. June Wuxi stood high upon Lord Memahed as she stared down with undisguised contempt in her eyes at the bunch of trembling men below. Her frosty gaze turned and she saw the heavily panting black beast standing on one side, with an unconscious Mukian fan slumped across its back, fainted from an excessive loss of blood. The garish sight of Mukian fan covered in bright red blood, reflected in June Wuxi's chilling eyes. Did all of you, just injure my patient? June Wuxi's eyes were slowly bubbling with rage as she turned them upon the band of hopelessly terrified men. W.H. What the leader of the men stammered inaudibly, as his teeth chattered loudly. Who was this youth? He was actually able to make a legendary guardian grade spirit beast completely subservient to him? Who who are you we are not your enemy the man's mind was in a confused whirl, and June Wuxi's words did not register on him. Oh? June Wuxi's eyebrow arched dangerously, as her lips curled up into a slight murderous smile. What a shame, I merely feel like killing all of you. Her cold chilling words struck deep into the men's hearts. Their minds screamed and they suddenly found their legs. They immediately turned around and ran heedlessly back the way they had come from. They had clearly felt the chilling murderous rage emanating from June Wuxi. They were not given to opportunity to find out why the youth had suddenly wanted to kill all of them, but that did not matter anymore. They knew one thing for sure, if they did not run immediately, their lives would be forfeit.